I did. God bless you. How are you, Val? <laughs> Not as good as you, man. I remember back in the day. Oh, golly. It's great to talk to you. It's great. You know, we have a, uh, a, a well, we know a lot of people. Yes. But there's one guy that we knew that I didn't even realize you knew him. And that is our boy right here, Pat Kaneen. Absolutely. He actually sent out pictures of you and him in the booth way back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, the first set of, uh, of like, sure earbuds that I ever that I ever got, Pat, Pat made for me. Pat's awesome. Wow, they were not wi- they were not wireless though, right? No, they weren't wireless, but they were still, you know, it was Pat was ahead of the curve, man. Like those were the those were the, the sweet ones from you know, back when when I first started. Before they came out with, you know, all the beats by Dr. Dre and all the uh, That's right. all the exact so you're still using those? You use headphones. You have to use a headset mic to do these games, don't you? I do have to use a headset mic to do these to do these games and you know the other thing is you need something directional just so that you know as the fire trucks are going past my apartment that uh, as someone's wrapping into a 463 double play that they're not hearing the sound of a siren wait a minute the espn with all the billions of dollars that they've been losing as the stock goes down or whatever's happening they uh they can't come in and soundproof your studio while you're doing a baseball game at 5 30 in the morning I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so have you been practicing? Because is this the first time? Because I know a lot of soccer guys back in the yeah. day would broadcast games from overseas, but they'd be sitting in a studio in Connecticut and other places. Is this the first time you'll ever be doing a I'm not at the scene broadcast watching no, on a monitor? I've, I've done it before. In fact, I would say one of the hardest things I've ever done, I did the WBC from site in Orlando in 2006. So I did one of the brackets there, but I also did the Far East from the Tokyo Dome, but I did it from a broom closet in Bristol. <laughs> so I was, I was in there uh, broadcasting those six games. And then I also uh, went to Tokyo in 09 and did China, Chinese, Taipei, Japan, and Korea. So... And then a couple of years later, I did a Caribbean League World Series off of monitor. So I've done it. It's hard. The combo of not knowing the league or the names and not being there is pretty challenging. And so, you know, I, my opinion and thought is you know, we're going to be doing these games, but I'm not doing it straight, straight. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just... You're not, it's not like our audience is locked in and they're, you know, I have, you know, a million Kia Tiger fans. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're just sort of learning. So it's going to kind of be a talk show in the morning and I'll call some of the stuff and also have some fun and, you know what I mean? Like you can't, because it, it's just, it's, it's too, the, the degree of difficulty plus the technological aspect. Um, yeah, it's, it's, the degree of difficulty is pretty high. That's one of the things I was wondering, John, is how much work goes into the pronunciation of the names. A lot. Yeah. I have a couple of, yeah, I have, I have two guys that I'm basically doing audio text and running the pronunciations test. I don't want to, like, look, I know that, you know, it's easy and lazy to turn the names into a joke, but, you know, when push comes to shove, you know, I'm not down for somebody to call me John Scamby. <laughs> so what are we doing? You know what I mean? Like, right. so you got to give it a shot. And so the one thing that I'll do, I've asked people, for the most part, you know, Chan Ho Park over there, they go by Park Chan Ho. But the games are being broadcast over here. So we're going to do all the names American style, and the family name goes last. So... That's one of the things, and our graphics um, will reflect will reflect the same. Um, but I, you know, I'm going to try my best on the names, and I'm, I'm working hard. And you know, the, the other part that's a little that's a subtlety um, in this whole thing is that baseball in the Far East, they they kind of like to guard the lineups and make it secret stuff. So 
you know, you, there are times when they'll, they won't give you the lineup until like 45 minutes before first pitch. And, you know, it's something the average fan doesn't think about. But for us, that's, that's challenging. It would be if they gave us the lineup three hours beforehand, um, I would be in, in much, much better shape. Now, you're, so you're, the game that you're doing tomorrow morning, our time, East Coast time, starts at 530. So you get the lineups at what, 4, 4.30 in the morning and then have to go through it? <laughs> kind of. Hmm. Yeah, I, so I, my first game's Friday. So, my first, yeah, my first game's Friday. So uh, Friday at 5.30, I think probably 4.15 or so, 4.30 is when I'll probably get the lineup. How descriptive will you get with the bat flips, which we understand are encouraged over there? Yeah, they're 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 absolutely encouraged, and I will be delighted by the bat flips. Um, I, I I am uh, I am here for bat flips. What are we talking about? Um, and the cheerleaders like, too. Yeah, we're cheerleaders, and there are no there are no fans in the stands. They, there's there's one. I would say the one big production element, like we had a little production call for our game, and they're showing us, you know, last year's. OPS leaders and the MVP, and then for the NC Dinos, there's like a 30-second video with the cheerleaders and their mascot. By the way, Tony, if there is one thing that you take from this interview, it's that the NC Dinos mascot is Swole Daddy. That's Swole, Swole Daddy. Daddy. Did Swole it, Daddy. Is he ripping off Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner? <laughs> right. That's right. So, but anyway, the, the, the one piece of production that I hope we get in over the weekend is there is a COVID-19 washing your hands video, basically to the Baby Shark song with Swole Daddy. Oh, man. And, you got to get that. And, two, and three cheerleaders, a guy and two girls. So it's Swole Daddy, a guy, two girls, and they're basically doing a dance. Two baby sharks, so it's along the lines of oh. wash your hands, 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 wash your hands, 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 like that. That's one of wow. your chat room names, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely, yeah, that's my Tinder profile. <laughs> swole Daddy, baby. Come See? to Swole Daddy. Swipe right for Swole Daddy. I'm here Daddy. to contribute to this show, damn it. <laughs> yes, you are. Well, we're warming you up, Boog. We need to get that's you right. ready. When you when you said in a broom closet in Bristol, that's where we used to do our shows when we worked together up at ESPN in a broom yeah, closet in Bristol. Believe it. <laughs> John Chabi joining us. Now, you're gonna, Jessica Mendoza is going to be doing the analysis, right? Um, so I will basically have Eduardo Perez for uh, some of the games, Jess Mendoza for some of the games, and uh, – Kyle Peterson for some of the game. Beautiful. No, but they're going to yeah. be in separate places uh, looking at a screen, too. So you can't – there's not even any interaction between the two of you, right? No, they're all going to be in my bedroom, Tony. Oh, okay. That's a good idea. As long as you have yeah, – uh, no. you put up some right. plexiglass between. No. You, you, yeah, you, no. You get some fiberglass. You put some insulation up on yeah. the walls. And then this no, way, you know – yeah, Kyle will be in Omaha. Jeff will be out in Oregon. And Ward yeah, we'll all be separated. That's right. But you got to keep them separated, man. I mean, what can I tell you? <laughs> now, Miss Robin has found the video uh, that oh, no. you were referring to. Okay. Now, I see the sign that you have. It says, hi, booger. What does it say on there? It says, hi, boog. Oh, boog. Uh, redhead for, redheads for life, which I'm totally all for. When did you post that? I just I did it now. Hi, boog. Redheads for life. Oh, you wrote that I to him? It. No, no. He was holding it up in one of his photographs. That's why I was asking him when he did that. Go to the, let's go to the video. I want to see this because I want to share All this right. with you together, Boo, because of our yes. association over these many decades of broadcasting. Absolutely. Let's go to the tape. Now, this is the dinos. Yes. yes. Everybody now. <laughs> now, where's Swole Daddy going to come into yeah. this? Yeah. He's coming. It's just a dude in the middle and two cheerleaders on, on each side it's of it. Oh, that's a male cheerleader. I like the little bubble sounds in there. You realize you're going to yeah. have this in your head the rest of the day. Absolutely. Oh, there, oh, there he is. There he is. 
Wait a minute, that's Swole Daddy? That's right. He's a dinosaur. Yeah, the dino. Hello? He's a dino, Tony. But he's not Swole. Where the hell is he swole? Yeah. He needs some steroids. <laughs> maybe maybe when he hangs out with the cheerleaders a little bit more, can he'll we become bring, swole. Can we send yeah. Jose Canseco over there to give him a little injection in the butt or something? Dude. All right, enough of that. All That's right. horrible. I saw the LG Twins mascot had a mask on. He like did? Over the, yeah. Uh, yeah, over oh, the face yeah. of the mascot. Wow. Yeah. Now, Boog, the other question that I have, of course, when you look at yeah. this, is, you know, the, the the opening. Did you see the, the guy who threw out the first pitch in a gigantic bubble? Remember the movie? Yeah, the kid. The kid was in a giant bubble, like the yeah. old movie with what's-his-face in it? Uh, John Travolta. John Travolta. The, 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 the boy in the bubble. The boy in the bubble, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Do they do that at every game, or is that was just like an opening day uh, spectacular? I'm thinking that was, uh, I think I believe it was, National Children's Day, and they were honoring social distancing there. Beautiful. Bookshop. Now, let me ask you this, because while you're doing Korean baseball, and they're going to be doing this, this isn't just a one-week deal, right? You guys are going to be doing oh, no. the whole season. That's right. Now, what happens if baseball comes back in July? Do you just say, screw this Korean baseball crap, let's get back to real baseball? Honestly, I, I think it's got to be contract leverage, don't you think? I, I'm basically going to sit there. and I, At that point, I'm, I'm guessing that I will become a monster star in Korea, and I'm thinking I'll, I'll be able to go back to the worldwide leader and turn it into millions. Exactly. you got to say, you know, what happens if baseball comes back, MLB comes back, and then the Korean Baseball League pulls a cease and desist, wait a minute, wait a minute now, you made a commitment to us. There's no way you're going to put on the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Cincinnati Reds over our game. We're down the stretch here. we got a championship, and we got to play it through. Yeah, I mean, I, look, I, I, I will broadcast as many games as they want me to broadcast in, in any language in whatever country they want me to, to do it in. I'm, I'm there for it. I'm there for it, period, period. Yeah. If you had to equate the level of, you know, the quality level of the play yeah. over there to something over here, where would it rate as far as, like, is it as good as double-A, uh, triple-A baseball over here, or, you know, is it better than that? So I would say overall it's probably somewhere between double A and triple A. I would say in terms of skill set, offense is good. It, it, they have guys that can hit. Mm-hmm. They, their, their style is more Americanized so that there's not, the, there's not the Japanese emphasis on small ball. And just from a body type, the players have more mass to them. They're not lean and athletic. They're just they're some bigger dudes, mm-hmm. and they're looking to lean on stuff and try and hit home runs. And they have, you know, most lineups have probably three or four guys that are legit, you know, four A big league caliber hitters. The pitching, the velocity isn't what you're used to. The one skill set that I have been told across the board is really below average is defense. It's, it's, it, again, it's a contrast with Japan. It is not emphasized over there, or has not been. It's improving, but they do not play defense at a particularly high level over there. Hmm. Now, you mentioned uh, the play. There's a lot of uh, former major leaguers in there. I saw a video of Ben Lively, former pitcher mm-hmm. with the Phillies, what he has to go through when he pulls into the stadium. They stick, yeah, their, they stick the real long Q-tip thing oh, up his nose. all the way up his nose yeah. into his brain, and then they stick yeah. another one down his throat oh my God. just for him yeah. to get into the facility I think every they're day. they're allowed three yeah. foreign players That's, on each team. You, yeah, you know what's funny about the test is that I so I saw that, um, but the interesting part of it is um, that is not standard for every team. As of right now, the only thing that's consistently happening is – they are taking guys' temperatures as they come into the ballpark, and if you are symptomatic, they will test you. But otherwise, they are not testing guys. Like that's that's uh, an outlier, I guess is the best way to put it. They're not consistently testing everybody. 
So do you think Major League Baseball will watch this even though they'll look down on it because it's not as good and the players that are over there are guys who really didn't cut it in the National League or American League and in Major League Baseball and say, you know what? we got to start thinking of ways, because they already are thinking of it. I, I saw some stories yesterday, Boog, about spring training, too. A couple of sources are saying June 10th they're talking about uh, spring training part two and then opening up the season in July. Joe Girardi made some comments. A lot of baseball people are now all seem to be looking at those two dates. June 10th, spring training, July 1st resumed or starting the day, baseball season. Day, yeah. you, you think that's what's going to happen, obviously, with no fans. So, I, look, I'm hearing absolutely that, and they really want to play, and there is optimism. Um, so I, I think there's a decent chance of it. There's a big but, however. You know, I love big buts, by the way. I right, cannot lie. They cannot lie. Um, <laughs> the issue, though, is like over the next few weeks, like here's the, here's the problem. You know, not to go all Dr. Fauci on you, but you can't – look, the places that are opening up their economies, you're not going to know whether tons of people are getting sick and being hospitalized for a few more weeks. So as it stands right now, it seems like we're heading in a good direction. But I, I would still say, you know, if Georgia all of a sudden has an explosion of hospitalization and, and infections – it's going to make everyone think twice about it. And even though in the bigger cities, in L.A., Chicago, and New York, they flattened the curve, it really is, you know, it's, it's kind of growing in terms of the number of affections in most other places. So I, it's, I, I would say it's sort of up in the air at the moment. I would also say this. My guess, guess my opinion, is for – for Major League Baseball to come back, I think that they'll have to have widespread testing. Like, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You're gonna, right. But then, Tony, the issue becomes this. I don't think that they can, from an optics standpoint, have the backup second baseman for the Diamondbacks having access as someone who is asymptomatic to sick test a week if somebody in Sheboygan can't get tested. I hear you, man, and I'm not, I'm not taking a side in this. I hear all the I'm experts. I'm yelling at you, Tony. I'm Dr. I'm Tony you, Grouchy. Tony. You can call me Dr. Tony Grouchy because, you know, right. this is one of those debates now is that everybody's wrong. You're right You're as many wrong. times as Fauci. You're wrong. I'm wrong. Dr. Fauci's wrong. Everybody's wrong. Every governor, every mayor, the president, everybody's wrong. So when everybody's wrong, I want to be right. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying I'm Love right you and you're wrong. wrong. No, I mean, you kind of are, though. Thank you, man. But, now, now yeah. I got one big problem that I just found out, and this is breaking yeah. news, and it's really the most distressing thing I've learned. Is this Twitter? In the last couple of weeks. Yep. And especially today. Yeah, I know mm-hmm. exactly where you're going. What is it, Harry? Let's see if you know. John Boog Shambi is not following Tony Bruno's show on Twitter. Oh, no. Now, it's an outrage. It is an outrage. What is up with that? How far do we go back, Boog? How far do we? And you're not following me on Twitter? Are you serious right now? I I got and I, I and I'm gonna and I'm gonna I'm gonna plead guilty, and then I'm gonna plead guilty, and then uh, oh, did this just in? I uh, breaking news. Can I have the sound effect? Yes, absolutely. Yes, breaking news. Yes, this just in countercharge. You're putting me on for freaking Korean baseball. I wasn't on your show once last season for Major League Baseball. And you're going to put me on just because I'm doing Korean baseball, but I wasn't good enough to be on all last year. I wasn't on last year. I wasn't on Sirius XM's uh, 211. I just came on a month ago. If I was doing a major show that the whole world can hear, even in Seoul, or people listening in a Kia Soul. That was a pretty good right, rebuttal. Yes, right, it, it was. was. Listen, I'd put you on every week if you want, man. So that's your lame Sorry. excuse for not following me? <laughs> wow. He had good Sorry, energy there. He got that was that, you I fought, I'm energy. glad I fired you up so that when you get into the booth, <laughs> and, and when you're in your, yes. house, when you're in your apartment, that's right, I want to hear some. I, w- I don't want to hear somebody giving a half-ass effort 
for Korean baseball. Kim you June Wan. You gotta treat this like it's the playoffs, man. Like it's September baseball. We're not October talking about to practice. Rem- yeah, we're talking he about- dong. Oh, that he dong that ball. That baby is. I want you to go Harry Callis for me a little bit tomorrow. <laughs> that ball is you know, out of you know, here. First, so you know Harry Callis is my guy, right? Like that's, that's who I grew up. I love. Harry Callis. I grew. I was born in Philadelphia. I, I grew up a huge Phillies fan. And the first time that I ever met Harry Callis, I was at Dolphin Pro Player Joe Robbie Stadium, and I was. I, this is true. I was in line getting food, and I had my back sort of turned to the person that was in front of me, and all of a sudden I hear. I'll have some lasagna, a little bit of green beans on the side, and some salad. And I was like, oh, my God, it's Harry. And, like, I was scared to death, and I tapped him on the shoulder and introduced myself. So you didn't grow up listening to me in Philly when you grew up here? Uh, well, I was, I, grew, I was born in Philadelphia. I moved to New York when I was seven. I hate to do it. Now, to he's you. off the hook, man. I hate to do seven it. Seven years old. Oh, my Now, you need to tell Boog to re-listen to the Lenny Dykstra. Yeah, I mean, uh, Lenny calls in on Friday afternoons after a couple of pops. And Lenny had some really great... Harry Callister. Harry Callister. You need yeah. to listen back to Friday's <laughs> <Yeah>. episode. <laughs> if, you, if Harry Callis was your uh, your hero before, yeah. he'll be even more so now. I think Boog, being around baseball for a while, <laughs> knows the legendary Harry Callis stories. Come on. It involved a hot tub. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, you know, he, Boog was in Miami for all those well, years. Yeah, you don't think yeah. he was in hot tubs down in Miami? Exactly. Exactly. Well, John, get ready to get. I hope you get back now. You're going to go. How are you going to go to sleep and then get up at like four o'clock in the morning? How are you? How's this going to work? I for haven't you? even. Fi- I really haven't even figured it out. Like, how about my first three games? My games are Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Right. My start times are five thirty a.m., four a.m., and one a.m. Hmm. Jeez. Just Hang don't sleep, up. man. Just stay up twenty four seven. Believe it. <laughs> Well, you could give him Woo! some advice from doing morning yeah, radio. Yeah, do what for I used to do years. at ESPN. Get four Jolt Colas and then <laughs> yeah. stay up all night and drink. Do they still make Jolt Colas? That's I what I used so. to do when I drove back from Connecticut to Philly every weekend. But anyway, Boog, it's great the to thing talk to you. I remember about you doing those shows is we would go back to the, what was the name of the, the hotel? It wasn't the Double The, Ra- the Radisson. The, the Radisson. The Radisson. Yes. And just a bathtub full of beer. Yep. Even Dan, pa- right. even Dan Patrick used to come to those soirees at 1 a.m. Yeah. after our big, long 17-hour and weekend shifts. It was good that's stuff, right. man. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Is that the Radisson in Hartford right next to the arena? No, it's Radisson in Bristol. No, no. Oh, right, in next Bristol. Okay. The, right next to the, yeah. test, the elevator test shaft is right there. Mm. The, that's w- right, the Otis elevator shaft. The that's actual right. Otis call. elevator test shaft where they actually yeah. would test the Otis elevators before they would put them in buildings right there in Bristol. That's the yeah. kind of stuff we had. Growing up up there. Yeah. Beautiful. Tony, I just followed you on Twitter, by the way. Thank you, man. I know it had yeah. to be painful. Probably as painful as having one of those long swabs stuffed up your throat and up your nose to see if you're positive. But you're positively one of the best in the business, Boog. Great to have you on, man. Appreciate you popping on. Good luck. I'll be up at 5.30. That was awesome. I'll be up Thanks, listening, you guys. man. Yeah, you, you're telling whoppers right now. Give me a, little, give, give me a little Harry.